Welcome back to week two and three of my triathlon training for the Monster Triathlon. I missed in the video last week, so I thought I'd merge this week into two, so you get two weeks worth of training in one go. And then one thing I'm gonna do is discuss my triathlon gear throughout this video. I'm gonna go over all the gear I've got now and kind of what I started with. My equipment is by no means crazy. I think it's kind of barely standard, and most of it, even the expensive purchases, like I've got my bike here set up on a Wahoo kicker. That came over time. I bought the bike separately, then I bought the kicker separately. Got my old bike as well, redecorated and immortalized it on the wall. It's the bike that I did my my first Ironman on. Back on with Sunday. Afternoon ride. McCarthy special, one hour. I'm in the dark room because having the light on makes it hotter in here. That was a tough ride. And the heart rate shows it. 175 max. Ooh. And on the Monday, we did a kind of brick session. So it was a Zwift ride, only like a, a 40 minute one. Another Zwift session, step by step this time. Doing it 105% as well to try and see if my FTP needs to go up. And then I did a full track session. Uh, another run is over. Uh, 400 meters fast, 400 meters recovery. Somehow I managed to do like a, I think it was a six minute 50 mile in there at some point. So my recoveries were definitely a bit too uh, fast to start. Overall, pretty good session. My legs feel all right considering it was a double training day. And that's another Monday done. Tuesday was swimming. And that's where I'll get into my first kind of gear stuff that I use for my training is of course swimming. That's the first event you start with. I, I've got these Speedo shorts, which are like quite tight shorts. I have probably, this is probably the second pair I've had of exactly the same shorts in like five years. In terms of outdoor swimming, DHB, probably one of the cheapest ones you can get. This is the one I did my first half Ironman in. I also did my full Ironman event in this. And I did a, an outlaw event like two years ago. Got a couple tears there. I don't know if you can really see. In terms of like other gear you need when open water swimming, most places require you to wear a swimming cap. So I don't ever wear this in the pool, but if I'm open water swimming, so most events like outlaw, will give you your own to wear. So I do have some other random swimming equipment. Uh, like I've got some fins. I've also got a board as well. And I do have some of these little hand bins as well. And the last thing of course is goggles. So these are Speedo goggles, just black ones. And then one point I lost these. So I just bought a new pair of these dogs ones. I don't really have particularly fancy goggles. So this swimming session was my first swimming session back in like five or six weeks. I was so slow going back. I went back into the lane that I normally would do. So yeah, this was a real struggle. My shoulders were killing. It felt like I was just trying to like, I was dragging the water back but my arms weren't moving. It felt like swimming through jelly. Very tough session definitely need to practice a bit more swimming. On Wednesday, it was another Zwift session. Wednesday morning and we're back on Zwift. Feel like in the next 90 whatever days until the race, I'm gonna see a lot of this angle. That endurance simulation today, so an hour and 15 minute ride. I'm doing it 105% again. The first day I was off work, so it was a long zone two run. This is the joys of living in England. It was horrible and rainy yesterday. It's quite sunny and clear today, which is a good timing because I got a two hour run. Outside. I've tried to always run at like a similar sort of place, so Joe Water is a local reservoir to me. The zone 2 run for me is a little bit slow, it was like 9 minute 30 pace per mile. Normally for me zone 2 is more like, like bang on 9 minutes, uh, but it was my first long run in a little while, so uh, it's definitely a 2 hour one I haven't done for a bit of time. These geese are very, very, I'm always worried I'm going to get hissed at and chased, but so far so good. Friday and Saturday I was at work, so I did cycle to work and back which I suppose brings me nicely on to the, the second gear section, which is uh, cycling. So in terms of when I first started, I just had like shorts that were like kind of tight skin shorts, but they didn't go over the shoulders or anything like you'd see, which now I don't know how I walk, because I used to ride them for like 30 miles. These ones I wouldn't recommend. As you cycle, they often get looser or they will start to drop down because they're not over the top of your shoulders. So yeah, kind of like these ones. So these go, you wear them over your shoulders. So these are the ones I'm probably going to look to wear during the event. And I've just got two new pairs, which is why I wanted to do this video. So I've kind of got this winter top to go with that. So this is quite thick. Again, a short version. Uh, with a top. Better for the summer and also for Zwift riding. I like to wear the shorts. I hate wearing leggings as soon as I start going on Zwift, I start sweating. But then to begin with, this was all I had, which again, uh, DHB tri suit. I've seen so many people wearing this exact same tri suit because I think if you go on Wiggle, this is like the cheapest one. So I don't really know what you call these like snooty sort of things. So you can wear them on your neck, which I often do when cycling, or most of the time I'll just kind of fold them up and wear them on my head when I'm running. One last thing I would say for cycling, um, which I'll say for the running part, is is you want to be having stuff to keep you warm. Sometimes you're going to be cycling in conditions that aren't great, so like having some good gloves, um, overshoes, long legged shorts, body warmers, stuff like that. All right, so in terms of cycling gear, this is where it all began for me. Uh, so my first proper road bike was this Carrera. This bike I actually did my half Ironman on, my full Ironman on this bike, which is probably like 
Four hundred pounds, maybe from how? Not the most amazing bike, but I managed to do an Ironman on this bike. And then here we have the bike that I use now, which is my Felt. Amazing bike, so much lighter than the other bikes. So I just like picking it up and, and using it, and really, really enjoy it. Very comfortable. And then also, obviously, I've got the Wahoo Kicker there. Single best thing I did for my indoor training was getting one of these. It definitely has meant that I cycle way less outdoors because I've got this. Pedals are all just like clipping pedals, and I have got a Garmin on the pedal, so that tracks my RPM. And then also my heart rate monitor is on the floor. And then before, when I first started, I just used to I either went out with friends that planned the routes for me or I would just you know plan a route in my head and just cycle on it now I've got the Garmin which I can pre-plan all my routes on Strava upload them to Garmin and then yeah kind of plan my routes before I even go out just got a standard plan off Amazon to help keep me cool Sunday I was supposed to do a short run zone free I think I had three long days at work so I managed to get the run in only did 30 minutes since I had 40 minutes and I took the dog with me and we're taking the dog we we'll to go for a run. Obviously having the dog there, the pace is quite varied, but I still managed to get the run in uh, after a busy weekend. But on the Monday, yet another track session, so we might as well move on and talk about the running. So in terms of trainers, I literally started off with like the basic. I'm sure when I ran my first marathon, it was in like a pair of 30 pound Nike or Reebok shoes. Now I've got a little bit more advanced, so normally I often have two pairs that I kind of rotate between. At uh, the minute, both of my pairs have done like high miles. So normally you want to train, change out your trainers when you get to like 500, 600, 700 miles. Both of my pairs of Hoka have done that now. So I just picked up a new pair. So in terms of running gear, apart from the shoes, I don't really get that fancy. I've got shorts, two pairs of Adidas, I think, and one pair of Puma shorts. And then in terms of tops, most of my running tops are all just from events now. So I probably started off with a couple tops to run in that were just like standard gym tops. And now all of my tops that I have, so this one's from Manchester Marathon. I just run in them all the time. Normally, most of the time I wear Under Armour underneath. And then one thing I would recommend is getting like a jacket or something like that, because that is one of the best investments you can make. Just editing the video in the car, as you do. I forgot to talk about my running uh, belts and backpack. So I will also link those below. Definitely recommend a running belt. I never liked one of those like shoulder things that you can put their phones in. Um, if you're gonna have your phone Exit and listen to music. Continue on Rugby Road for uh, two I've got the baby seat in the back there, but the baby's not here yet. <laughs> three weeks to go, isn't it, Nicole? Less than three weeks now. How are you feeling? Fat. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll link that stuff in below, because yeah, you don't want to be carrying your phone when you run all the time. And then if you do more than like an hour, I normally take a little bottle of water with me, so I've got a running backpack for that, which is pretty good as well. The track session here, this one was kind of weird. It was like doing intervals, but set pace. So you did like 100 meters fast, and then you did 300 meters recovery, then 200 meters fast, then 200 meters recovery, then 300 meters fast, then 100 meter recovery, then 400 meters fast, then 400 meters recovery. I was trying to make sure I really went for it on the fast sections and just kind of really took it easy on the recovery sections. And then Tuesday was another swimming session. I keep forgetting to take my GoPro swimming. I'm gonna try and remember to take it next week. Wednesday, I actually swapped a swift session around. It was supposed to be like an hour long session, the Gorby. I swapped it to do step by step. Definitely regretted it. Uh, I think it'll be in the next week now when I swap the session because yeah, that hour session was a tough one. Thursday, it's a long run day, but I'm off tomorrow as well. So I've got two quite long days. So today's just a 90 minute run at zone two. It was a nice, nice day for a nice run round. And finally, for the first time in these two weeks, we, we took the bike outside, actually went out on my road bike on Friday for a brick ride. So I did a nice hour long ride, which was, was pretty good to get out. Uh, pace wise was fairly decent for me. So it's like bang on 16 miles for the hour. And then we did a nice 30 minute uh, brick run after that. The pace wasn't amazing. And my legs were definitely feeling it. I haven't done a brick run for a while. My legs are not enjoying this. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to go really, really slow. I'm not going that slow, to be fair. And we're building up the train. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. And, and this was a pretty consistent week for me. I didn't miss any workouts. I'm going to try and keep up these videos. Obviously, if I miss a week, I can kind of merge them into two like this and then just cover off all the training that I'm doing. One thing I'll try and do is make sure I link in the description all the gear that I've got and talked about in this video. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll carry on this journey again next week. And, uh, yeah, gradually make our way closer to the Monster Triathlon.